Hello everyone and Bro Silly here with a little bit of a video that doesn't really fall into any particular series that I've been doing. It's um basically going over the types of ships in the game and kind of explaining them a little bit. This might not be too useful if you've been playing this game for a very long time or watching for a very long time, but you never know, maybe you'll pick something up. And if you're new, definitely make sure to like to see more of these videos come out. So. First, let's go over the battleship. So, battleship is a very typical brawler ship. It's meant to take hits, and it meant it is also meant to deal damage at a very long range. So, it's also kind of a sniper in a way. Now, I will say the Japanese ship does probably the battleship does probably like the best, and a lot of people will be tempted to go for the biggest ship possible. And just because I'm facing a fleet alone with just this battleship, I will I will build a pretty big battleship. However, there is something to say about going pretty small and having only a couple guns. Because, you know, you could do a, a very pocket battleship. Just put a couple 20s and boom. That's technically a battleship. It's very small. Pretty Well, I mean, one billion is not really cheap, but for 1950, that's pretty cheap. You can reduce beam and draft if you really wanted it to get cheap. Range and bulkheads. I wouldn't recommend putting bulkheads ever down below max, uh, maximum. It's not a good idea. Maximum lock speed is 31, I think. Yeah, I said 31. I try to do that. You can go a little lower, 30, 28 even, if you really want to have more armor. Armor is very important, but I like speed a lot, so I'm going to go with speed. I will also reset these because I think I'm going to make the biggest battleship possible. Let's go ahead and get all the training, all our quarters, range, we probably don't need that. And let's see, so 20 inch uh, quadruples is probably too much. Let's throw our superstructure right in the middle, grab the biggest barbed possible. Now battleships. They are supposed to do a ton of damage, and uh, normally these big guns that you can put on battleships that look super threatening aren't very good because they are very low technology because, you know, it, they were just invented or whatever. Uh, in 1950, even the 20s are Mark 5s, which is the highest mark you can get, which means that the level uh, gun is very, very good. So this thing shoots way over 60 km, like 50, 60 kilometers. And reloads right now it's every minute but if we go down and we change the reload then it becomes every 43 or sorry 47 seconds which is insane absolutely insane but normally i would not recommend going with just the biggest gun possible normally not a good thing i won't worry too much about spacing probably just leave it at this you need a lot of secondary guns as a battleship. You are a very typically slow ship. 1950 doing 31 knots. I think that might just be a Japanese thing, but that's pretty fast. Um, actually, you might need to reduce speed a little bit just to reduce cost and all that because maybe even draft are so high. Especially if you're going for the biggest battleship is the best like uh, doctrine. You definitely want to keep your uh, speed a little lower because it doesn't really matter and uh, speed kind of increases uh, a little bit when you get more and more of it you go more and more above the uh, optimal to optimal speed yeah there you go the at from 34 knots we're at like 5 billion 80 percent displacement taken we jump to 8 billion 131 percent displacement taken so we're just gonna stick at 30 knots that's good enough speed for me and you need to lack secondaries as well, because you won't be as fast and you will not be maneuverable. You will take a lot of torpedoes. Which don't always do a ton of damage, but they still can be very annoying. I'm going to go through some of these secondaries until I find ones that fit right here. Perfect. Because I don't care too much about secondaries at this point. It's something nice to have. Actually, I don't really like how these look, so I'm going to go ahead and throw some fives on there instead. That looks... to me, it looks better. If, I mean, if you want 6-inch guns, you can go ahead and throw 6-inch guns on here, but uh, I will not be doing that. 
definitely want as many as you can get and all these like little anchor points there's an argument to be said about filling every single one with a secondary gun I wouldn't blame some people for doing it I don't like putting it on every single anchor point though because it bugs the game a lot you will get a lot of lag I'm already getting a little bit of lag just from the couple I've already put on I think then I'll put a couple eights to deal with the cruisers Put them around. I don't really care too much about the exact placement. Just anywhere is fine. Yeah, that works. Doesn't look too pretty, but um, it'll get the job done. So that'll be pretty good. All of the guns are Mark V, so there's nothing too much to be said about which ones are the best. Normally the smaller ones are, they fire a lot faster, a lot more accurate. But now that we're on 1950, it doesn't really matter. So I can just go big guns and it's totally fine. And there's not a whole lot you have to put into propulsion. It's a battleship. It'll get to where it needs to go eventually. I'd usually just do diesel, gas turbines if maybe you want to. Just do diesel for simplicity though. You don't need turning. I'll put it on because I think I can have a displacement for it. Put some shaft on too so then I will have a turning circle of... Oh... That's a lot. That's uh, that's twelve hundred meters. Okay, that's basically. Even if we did unbalanced with the full shaft and electric, that's still, an hundred meter turning circle. All right, that that's just a waste of, my resources then to invest into that. So I will not be doing that. The engine is still good to have though. I would still keep the auxiliary engine. So, actually, my engine efficiency isn't even that good. That's not good. Uh, in that case, we might have to do not gas. Where's it? Uh, gear turbines. If your energy efficiency is pretty low, you don't have space for another funnel. Or you're lazy like me, you don't want to do all that again. And then fort. That doesn't even help it. All right. Well, in this case, you, I mean, you might just need to decrease your speed. That might just be the problem here. I think 27 knots is about as low as I'm willing to go. And there you go. It went from red to yellow. So since I'm going to be taking a lot of torpedoes, since I basically can't turn, I will put on the best hull bottom possible, best anti-torpedo, all the bar bat armor, just basically max all of this out. Typically a really good thing to do. And the armor will usually decrease your uh, overall weight from armor. Now there is something to say about dropping down this to an electric or auxiliary diesel 2. Usually two is the lowest people want to go. And that does save me a bit of space. You want to have spacious quarters, especially 1950, because being uh, burned down or having crew loss is a very real thing. Unfortunately, it has still not really been patched at all. Let's see. Usually increased AP is good. There won't be that many battleships I'll be shooting, but honestly, anything that gets hit by 20 inch guns is going to get absolutely shredded, even semi. Normally I do standard or capped, though there's an argument to be said if you have like smaller guns that are higher marked to go cap ballistic. And uh, base fuse is pretty good to stick around with. However, let's see. So on average with Citadel 5 and Modern Armor 2, we'll have an armor quality of 165%. We'll go ahead into settings, set this to 165% because I think that's the maximum we can go. We'll say 70, just a little above, because technically if you go with the turtle back, you get a little bit more armor. Almost exactly 170. We will stick with only nothing, because technically it's better in most scenarios, but there is something to be said about turtle back in some, in some cases. Now if we hover over our guns, we'll see that we pen an insane amount of armor, even at longer ranges, which we really don't need that. So I'm just going to drop this down to semi, see what it is now. It'll give me the tooltip, which it's not. There we go. It's not a great amount of armor. I think we bump it up to standard. Standard's okay. Okay, we might go with standard then. And then, let's see. I also forgot to upgrade this. Um, typically, the argument's always between cordite and tube powder. Uh, I just always go tube powder. It You have less range, but your reload is better. Your accuracy is better. Typically, all, all good things for me, because I, I always get closer to the enemy anyways. Triple base is a pretty good compromise though, but you only get this at the very 
last tier, so you might have to decide between Corda and Two Pattern if you're earlier than 1950. And then, normally, just TNT is good enough. If you want to experiment with HE damage and that type of stuff, Dunite, Pickerate Acid could be interesting. I just do TNT. We'll do super. Actually, no, we'll do light shells. Because that'll give us more range, which is. I guess that makes sense. And the penetration will go down. The reload will also go down, though, which is a good thing. The penetration isn't that big of a deal, though. Because there's a 20 inch shell, and so even a light 20 inch shell is going to feel like a heavy 18 inch shell. Let's give these guns a the best turning, because we don't want them to be turning while we get bombarded. We want those to turn as fast as possible. Best range finder is always recommended. Actually, I would say it's necessary, just best range finder possible. Radio, once you get uh, radar, you can just skip radio. Uh, acoustics, I don't, I'm not going to be dodging torpedoes, look at that. 2200 turning circle, we're not dodging, just ignore it. I mean, if you have a smaller ship that actually can dodge torpedoes, it doesn't have maximum torpedo protection, I would say at least a Hydro uh, 3, or a Hydrophone Station Type 3. You can put some sonar in it, I don't know if full sonar is worth it, it's up to you though. Rangefinder. Normally I would go with Coincidence, but since we have such a long range, and I can just shoot everything from a distance, I'm gonna go with Stereoscopic. So that's what I'll be doing. And we are overweight, that's something to worry about. However, since we'll be shooting from since a far distance, there's something to say about potentially going not the heaviest armor. Now normally I would match main belt with gun size. So we have 20 inch guns, those are our main guns, 20 inch main belt, have it, have it, have it, and then have that, and then just make this anywhere like, you know, a couple inches higher than the uh, main belt, which I guess doesn't work right now. Uh, inner belt, this is pretty important, I like to max this out, you don't have to, but this makes it very hard to be damaged, very hard, you can also just half it. So, 6, 3, 1.5, that works too, probably. Let's see. I always try to make this at least 2 inches higher than the uh, gun size, so 20 inch guns to 22 inches on top, so then half that 11 inches on top. Then we just take that and put that on the 8 inch gun, doesn't go that high, but that's fine. And just so on, so forth. There's something to say about making these barrels shorter. Because we have crazy range and we don't need it, so we might as well make them reload faster. I'm going to look down here, where it says 20 inch slash 53. There's a bit of a bug right now where they're not updating, so I have to delete some of these guns. And they should update. There we go, now we're at 50. So yeah, negative 5% brings them down to 50%. I'll go ahead and place these back really quick. Try to get a relatively balanced ship. Let's see, now we have a 39 second reload, so we shaved off about 5 seconds. Our range is dropped by about 4 kilometers, but again, I typically never engage anything at more than 30 kilometers, so I doubt that'll be that much of a uh, big deal. Now the rest of these guns, I think most people just typically max them out, which for some reason happens to be, oh, what's happening? Happens to be 22% usually. Alright, so we are very overweight. Now let's see why we're overweight. Bulkheads, that is an issue. And those 8 inch guns look weird. I think we have too many uh, 8 inch guns, so let's remove that. And this. That'll make us a little lighter. Let's scoot the guns back in a bit. That will save some displacement by making the citadel smaller. Just a little bit though. You see the citadel all the way up here. It's the, the kind of dark red area. That's the citadel of the ship. That's what the uh, main belt and main deck cover. The rest, the light gray, oh, the light gray is what the Ford belt, Ford deck, and uh, that stuff cover. All right. Um, how do we reduce? There's an argument said for not using bulkheads at later. Uh, later. What is not levels? Like later years of technology. 
I will try that. We'll see how that works. And then this is normally just good against mine damage because the anti torpedo is not as good against nine damage, but I don't need to worry about mine damage. So I might even do a single hole bottom just for this one. And then to top it all off, we're still overweight, which is not fun. I don't suppose if I reduce beam, it'll help. No, beam makes it worse. Reduce draft also makes it worse. How do I get out of this conundrum? Let's see. I guess I could get rid of auxiliary diesel engines. It's nice to have, but it is just that. It's nice. It's a nice. It's a nice thing to have. And now it's that, or we could go down a into torpedo protection level. Normally, I don't recommend this. There's also something to be said about looking at flash fire chance and reducing barbette accordingly. But I'm just gonna keep that maxed out because that's typically a very good thing to have. Now we have 99%. I think we can even increase speed a little bit. To the might, yeah, that's gonna mess with engine efficiency a little bit, which I don't like. That engine efficiency is already pretty low, as is. So let's go ahead and not do anything. I'm actually happy with this ship. So it's not totally. Uh, the displacement is not all totally used perfectly, but it's okay. It's an okay ship that I made pretty quick. The Suwo, only $20 billion. It's not that expensive, I promise. Alright, let's launch and see how the ship does. Alright, let's jump in. Here is my battleship, the Suwo. I should immediately be turning the guns because I have the range. Fire at this ship all the way over here, which is already firing at me. Looks like a interesting... Oh, well, they disappeared, I guess. We found their destroyers. I mean, their ships aren't bad. They're AI design ships? Not, well, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, but the AI will design very weird ships sometimes. Like, uh, what's the point of having these guns here? And then these guns here? Kind of weird. Also, these ships are drifting. That shouldn't be possible. So these look like the light cruisers. These because yeah, these look like the light cruisers. I think they could just be really yeah, because these are the destroyers. Honestly, they're not bad. The AI usually builds some crazy shenanigan ships that just look disgusting. However, this is not bad. All right, I'm to time 10 speed and just let the guns rip. We've already been hit. That's interesting. We are a huge target, so it doesn't really matter that much. Getting hit on a battleship is usually, oh yeah, look at that. One shot, one kill. We've literally hit one thing. We've done 37,000 damage. They hit us once for 47, just 47 damage. That's the power of a battleship. It has the ability to take a ton of hits, a ton of punishment, and deal it right back. Right now we seem to be firing at... I would assume to be... Oh my lord. Well, what was a... That, that ship is dead. I think... Is this ship dead too? No. It's a different ship. Here's their battleship. Which is interesting. Okay, here's what I mean by shenanigans. Look at this. Look at this. What is that barbette? How does that gun work? That's not possible. Why does that gun fit? Come on, Dreadnoughts, what's happening here? Like, come on. Come on now. That shouldn't work. It's just kind of sad to see. Like, all the other ships were so beautiful and actually slightly decently designed. But these... Oh boy. Plus they only have six guns and they are, let's see, 20s as well. So they also have 20 inch guns. So what ship did we sink? Uh, let me jump over here and see what the ship was. Oh, it's already underwater. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's uh, continue. Try not to be too zoomed into your battleship or it will get very loud and very quick. Oh Lord, my eardrums are bursting. So zoom out, it's quieter. We have a lot of ships over here. They're all coming directly toward, they are all dying though. One single shell obliterates them. 
Now we are going to start kiting away a bit because we do not want to be that close to these uh, enemy ships. Stereoscopic range finding, plus really good range, means that I would rather shoot these guys from a distance than get hit a bunch up close and potentially uh, die to fire damage or crew loss, which is a very easy thing to do to uh, ships that uh, are smaller but have a lot of smaller guns. They're coming directly at me. I'm going to start turning away. So I'm turning this way now. I'm trying to get away from them because we're only, let's see, about 25 kilometers away. We have obliterated a ton of their ships. So I don't know if I'm going to play this to completion. This is just an example. Obviously right now we've already obliterated like a ton of their ships at this point in real life. If this is a real life fleet, they would probably turn tail and run because they've just lost, you know, it's barely been 20 minutes and they've lost, I think, five or six ships already. And a ton of more ships are going to sink and taking a ton of damage. So I would be very concerned as the admiral of this fleet. However, they do not seem to care. The Suwo will continue with its floating fire. It will look beautiful. Look at that. That is... Interesting. Let's see, and in case you don't know how to do that, I think... It should be... Yeah, here, it's in hockey, so you control alt shift z Which is a lot of buttons, but... Oh well. That's the, uh, that's the buttons it requires. There are a lot of enemy ships. I did give them, I think, two battleships, four heavy, or four battle cruisers, eight heavy cruisers, uh, 16 light cruisers, and 32 destroyers. However, as you can see, we are tearing through these ships. Every time we hit with one shell, it's over. Now, we are dying. We're down to 48% uh, structure, now 47% structural integrity and 92% float ability, which isn't bad, but we are still flooding, so we're going to lose more. Yeah, we're already down to 89. Most likely, we will lose this. And most likely, it will not be a win because we cost $20 billion, and we will probably not sink $20 billion worth of stuff, which is why the argument can be said, is building the biggest battleship really worth it? Unless it's in, like, a challenge video, like for ship your champions, this is fine. In a campaign, does your nation have 20 billion dollars to spend on a ship that can sink like 10, maybe 20 ships before sinking itself? That uh, probably don't even cost a billion each. It's like, it's not a bad ship. I probably didn't build it as, you know, optimally as I could have, but... The amount of punishment this thing's taking... It's been hit over 300 times. It's only hit targets 49 times. We've, we've only hit 50 things. But in that time, we've probably sunk at least like half of those shells have sunk a ship. We are down to 18% structural integrity. This is the problem with uh, fighting so many small ships. Is uh, they will whittle down. We're already down to 33% losses. We're burning up. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose to fire in a second. But it's uh, it's very easy to get kills by small ships as a battleship, which is why you never want to go out without screens. And this is a very prime example of that. This was just a very quick video to show kind of what the battleship's supposed to do. Obviously, it's, it's supposed to go out with screens that will protect it from the smaller ships that, you know, tore this thing apart with hundreds and hundreds of small little, small little paper cuts that eventually made it bleed to death. So, yeah, don't normally try what I just did, you know, because here's, here's the setup. One battleship, same tech here, it didn't look good from the get-go, but it did pretty good. I didn't see, I didn't check how many it sank, but it did sink quite a few ships. Yeah, I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you would like to know more about ships of this game, this game or other similar games, hit the subscribe, leave a comment, like the video, do all these things. They help me out a lot and they're totally free. All right, thanks. Bye-bye now.